You have to watch when you marry how you influence your husband. You got to watch what you say to him. Because for most men, they were predominantly raised by their mothers. And so one of the only encouraging voices he ever had was the voice of a woman. It wasn't his daddy's voice that when he was in the womb, he was hearing echoing. The first voice recognition he has is a feminine gender. So because of that, the influence of that voice in his life, you could make or break a man. Welcome to Power in the Word, the exciting teaching ministry of yours truly, Dr. Henry W. Roberts, Jr. I am the founder and pastor of the Word of Life Community Church, one church, multiple locations to serve you, your entire family. Look, I want you to call a neighbor, call a friend, let them know that Power in the Word is on the air, then get you a Bible, a pen, and a notebook. Listen, I've been seeing some of you, hearing some of you, you've been talking to me, telling me how this program has been being a blessing to you. Well, look, this is what I need you to do, write me sometimes. Tuck a little something in the envelope. Doesn't have to be much. Every little bit counts. We're on the air. I need you to partner with me to make this gospel go forth around the world. We're making an impact that can't be erased. We're giving the devil a headache all because you partner with us. Continue to pray for us. But now, let's get ready to go into a revelatory world where I'm teaching revelatory truths that can change your life. I can help you if you let me. Tune in. Wait till we get back. God bless you. Go to Genesis chapter 2. I mean, yeah, chapter 1, verse 28, verse 30. You got it? Then hold your finger on that page, go to chapter 2. We're going to look at verses 15 and verse 17. All right, everybody got the first one? All right, everyone waiting on you. I don't know if you have not waiting on you. I ain't hear nothing on this side. I'm standing over here with y'all. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Everybody got it? Okay, we're going to the book of Genesis. That's the first book of the Bible. It shouldn't be that hard to find. See, because the Old Testament, that's your foundation. You can't build a building without a foundation. So you got to know where you're going. You got to know what you got to have. And you got to understand then, that God wants me to have these foundations so I can understand. The Old Testament prophesies about what we're walking in in the new. See, by the time we get to the Abrahamic covenant, I was talking to Dr. Marvin Sapp this week. And, and he, he taught on in his little speech dissertation. He had to do it this, this uh, educational conference we were at. And, and he was dealing with the Abrahamic covenant. When he got finished, I say, Doc, do you realize, and I'm going to look way ahead of myself, I said, do you realize that the Abrahamic covenant was so huge, it was so large, till it could not be capacitated in one man's lifetime? In other words, Abraham lived a long time, but he never saw in the physical. Now, he's in the great crowd of witnesses looking at us now. But he never saw in the field what God promised him, watch this, was so large that his life couldn't capacitate. 60, 70, 80, 90, 120, 960 years as Methuselah lived couldn't capacitate the, mass, the, 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 the massiveness of what God promised he was going to do through Abraham. And so it, it was so huge to you and I are still benefiting from it. Yeah. It's still coming to pass. And then even in our lifetime, we won't even be able to see it all. Come on. Our children will see it. See, you know how you've heard great uh, prolific speakers, and they're speaking, they'll say, well, we're standing on the shoulders of our ancestors. That's the truth. Right now in the kingdom, we're standing on the shoulders of Abraham. Now, when you leave this earth realm, whatever you leave behind, your children will be standing on your shoulders. Do you see it? So that means it wasn't able to be capacitated 
fully lived out in one man's lifetime. It has to keep going and going and going and going. Kind of like the scripture says, uh, a wise man layeth up an inheritance for his So now you're dealing with two generations just in that one. Now, after that two generations gets born, and they operate in that same wisdom that was preceded them, guess what? It goes to the children's children, to the children's children, to the children's children, to the children's 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 children. See, so by the time we get to talking on that Abrahamic covenant, and I show you where it says, in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. You'll be able to pull that together spiritually and see it with your natural eye. All right. Where did I say go? Genesis chapter 1. Just want to look at that real, real quick. Ready? Read it. Mm -hmm. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. Seed. Uh -huh. So we told you that that first covenant had to deal with the tree. Told you that it was the type and the shadow or the typification of what was to later be called the tithe. So the first covenant God cut with man dealt with obedience to his word concerning the tree that was in the midst of the garden. He said, out of all the trees that are in the midst of the garden, you may have freely eat, but the tree that's in the midst of the garden, thou shalt not eat of it. He never said, don't touch it. Eve kind of added that. He said, but in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. Yeah. So what was supposed to happen? When that tree bear fruit, it just fall to the ground and you just let it grow. But you still had the responsibility of taking care of the tree. Yeah, yeah you know how God bless you then it's up to you to get it to the kingdom where it's supposed to be. Right. Now, either you're going to obey it or you're going to disobey it. Let's move real quickly. Let's go to the Adamic covenant. Genesis chapter 3. I need you to get me 14 through 19. Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 through 19. You got it? Waiting on some of y'all over here. Y'all got your Bibles today on here? You ready? Amen. All right, ready to read. And the Lord God said to the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed of all God. All right, so the first part he deals with, the, with this covenant, he deals with the devil. He tells the devil, now this is what I'm doing, going to do for you, for what you did. Keep reading. My Lord. And I will put him between you and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall prove thy head, and I shall prove thy head. All right, now that, that, that points, Lamanus, to, 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 to what we read earlier, Galatians chapter 3. The purpose of Christ going to the cross, right here, he promises redemption. He promises the devil that I'm going to send one that's going to be greater than you. And even though you mess my folks up, I'm going to send one that's going to straighten them up. Yeah, keep yeah, reading, yeah, keep yeah. reading. Now, so he deals with the devil, he deals with the woman, then he's going to deal with the man. Come on, read. <laughs> right, now that's why you know it's an inordinate affection if you, if you are a female and you have female genitalia. For you to be physically attracted to another female. That's right. right here he says it's a natural affection for a woman to have a desire for a man. Nothing wrong with you complimenting somebody. You know, I, if you come to church, you clean, or I see you in the street. I ain't no hater. I'm going to tell you, Doc, you show. I like them shoes. That, that's just my style, you know, man. I ain't mad at you. I like to see you sharp looking good. I like to see God folk looking good. Amen. 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 So ain't nothing wrong with you telling another woman she pretty or she beautiful, but there's something wrong when you start feeling the wrong way. Yeah. 
you know now, just 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 secular for about three minutes. I can understand she's real beautiful. You, yeah, she that boy, God, that girl look good. So, you know, I'm married to a woman. I like women, so you know, I can understand a woman seeing another woman she's beautiful. Yeah, but don't be hating. Then, according to scripture, your desire though. The fire that's in your bosom yeah. supposed to be pointed towards the opposite sex, that's right. not the same sex. Come on. Amen. Make it plain. I'm just in the book. All right, come on, read. Come on, read. Hold on, I tell y'all what, y'all have lost it. Whenever we stop, hold your finger where we stop. You know, look up at pastor and hold your face. I know this thing, everybody gonna be sitting over here next week. I ain't sitting over there, pastor was going off, wasn't it, man? <laughs> Hallelujah. 17, so the Robert say 17. All right, ready, read. And, and to Adam, Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Stop, 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 stop. Sis, you, you, you know what, you, you're a powerful son. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you have to watch when you marry how you influence your husband. You got to watch what you say to him. Because for most men, they were predominantly raised by their mothers. And so one of the only encouraging voices he ever had was the voice of a woman. It wasn't his daddy's voice that when he was in the womb, he was hearing echoing. The first voice recognition he has is a feminine gender. Mm -hmm. So because of that, the influence of that voice in his life, you could make or break a man. You, you could almost take a sorry Negro and turn him into Superman if your game is tight. Come on, Doc. Work, Doc. You could talk to a weak joker and make him think he's strong. <laughs> Just like Eve talked Adam in the eating from that tree. Yeah. Try not to teach your husband to disobey God. Yeah. Don't push him to disobedience. All right, come on, let's pick up read. 17 again. Y'all know when I had to stop you, I'm going to stop you. But let's roll. Come on, ready, read. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, Wow. And hast eaten of the tree, on which I commanded thee, saying, Because you touched the tide. Under the wife's influence, you disobeyed me. And she told you, oh, that's too much money. You don't need to begin the church all that money. Sound like Ananias and Sapphira? Yeah. All right, back on up. Keep reading. Let's go. At first, when a woman would have a baby, now don't y'all take this wrong, it probably was just like it is in the animal kingdom. She would just be able to release that child, get up, go on back to work. No pain. You know, if you ever watch, you know, y'all know I watch Discovery Channel, Animal Planet, the amount of lions and the animals had them babies, they'd be right on back up. An uh, elephant could have a baby. And she'll be right there with her baby, till pushing the baby till they get up. As soon as the baby able to get up, they start walking and going on a journey. Uh -huh. So those labor pains and that intensity of that pain came as a result of disobedience in the garden. For the man, with the, if you ain't lazy, that's why we have to work so hard for the harvest. At first, the harvest would just come and all we had to do was just pick it. Now, he says the ground is going to have some obstacles. You're going to still be able to get your harvest, but you got to work a little harder for it. Ain't nobody up in here but me. Read it, read it. You read it for yourself. Ready, read. Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Read. Cursed is the ground. <laughs> that is, uh huh. Yes. Hmm. 
Wait, 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 will y'all stop? That was 17, verse 19. Go, go ahead on then, and I'll tell you what. It, chapter 3, yeah, verse, yeah, yeah. Now, let's look at the, the uh, nomadic covenant, and we're going to have to stop on that one today. Go all the way to Genesis chapter 8. You get anything this morning? Now, eight is the number of new beginnings. So right here, things are kind of like starting over again. Because even though he cut all those other covenants, well, man kept messing up. Couldn't keep the covenant. Just couldn't keep the covenant. Just, could, just couldn't keep up with his part. Just wouldn't do it. Just, just, just kept breaking it. So God would have to keep coming back because he loved you so much, see? Amen. Hello? Amen. See, see, he loved you so much that even when you messed up, he kept coming back to you. Kept, he kept trying to fix your problem. With your hard head self. Now don't you leave out here today being hard headed. <laughs> All right, eight, chapter eight, watch this, chapter eight. Let's look at, start for me, at verse 20. Then hold your finger there. We're going to go to chapter 9, and we're going to start at verse 17. All right, 8, verse 20. Ready, read. Wow. Neither will I again smite anymore everything living as I have done, while the earth remains, seeing that all the earth is full of holes and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night. And There's that principle again. All right, go to 9, verse 17, and I'm going to break that down for you. I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to show you how, you know, God made a promise. And so in the confines of that promise, he said, he said, uh, uh, okay, now I'm not going to destroy the earth with water no more. So he says, now when he comes back, it's going to be fire. Because he already promised us that he wasn't going to, well, not no water no more. He ain't going to flood it out. So when it comes back, it's going to be consumed with fire. And to purify anything, you use fire. Put that fire on something, it'll bring something back. Yeah. Put gold or precious metal in it, it, it gets out, burns out all the impurities. Yeah. When you heat it up, stuff just change. Yeah, yeah. Things just change. So he cannot, because God is faithful to his word, flood the whole earth again. So he has to bring that judgment so that we can come into the place in Revelation where it said there'll be a new heaven and a new earth and the way he's going to do it will be by fire this time because in the nomadic covenant he promised to, that to his people that no no we're not going to flood the whole earth even if they have a tsunami somewhere notice it didn't cover the whole earth but there is a day coming when the whole earth will see the fire fall from God alright come on read that 9 and 17 then we're going to move on Wow, wasn't that word good? You can get a copy of today's message on uh, uh, CD, DVD, which is audio or video, by simply calling or writing us at the number that will be located on the screen at the information that my announcer will supply you with. Word of Life, as I said earlier, is a need meeting church. We, we have several opportunities. We have children's church, youth activities. Uh, we have men and women's fellowships. And then you watch the teaching every week. It's so simple that even a babe could get the understanding. We want to connect with you. I need you to write me or call me and let me know how power in the word is blessing you. If you're out there and you're being blessed, I want to thank God for you praying for us and this, this allowing me to come into your homes, your offices, your place of business and minister to you. We've been doing this now about, oh, 18, 19 years, and we thank God for this journey. But listen, I need more of you partnering, and when you partner with us, we're going to send you a special partner package. You'll get a pen, you get a monthly tape, you get all kind of great things for just becoming a part of what we're doing. Every little seed counts. 
Look, if you can send twenty dollars a month, it would really be a great help to this ministry. Yeah, I did use the word help because the Bible says every joint supplies. You have a supply for me, and I have a supply for you. You know it's a connection between us because each and every week you tune in, you look forward to sitting down and waiting on power in the word. So the Bible says, if I have sown unto you spiritual, is it not right that we should reap of your carnal? Now, each and every dime that you're going to send is going to go forth to make sure that this, this television broadcast comes into your home and other homes and hospitals and hospices and, and convalescent centers and even the jail so that people can be blessed by the power of God's Word. Thank you for tuning in to Power in the Word. To order a copy of today's message in audio, CD, or DVD, write to Power in the Word, 351 Southcraft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama, 36611, or log on to our website at www.wordoflifecc.org. We would love to have you come fellowship with us at Word of Life Community Church, located at 111 South Florida Street in East Brookton, Alabama. Our service times are Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. for Sunday school, followed by an 11 o'clock worship service, and on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. for our Power Hour Bible Study. For more information, log on to our website or call 251-456-2652 or 251-809-2887. Life Television Network now has its own website. To view Life Television Network, to listen to Life Radio Network, or to learn more about sponsorship and the many things Life Television Network has to offer, simply go to www.wordoflifetv.org. We here at Life Television Network and Life Radio Network thank you for your continued support. I am Dr. Henry W. Roberts II, and I am the president of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries, and also businessmen. But if you're out there and you're looking for a place where you can learn and glean a fellowship, not somewhere where somebody's trying to lord over you or be your pastor, but you want to be in a, a part of something and your church is in an independent situation, and I know that there are a lot of us out there, but we're not independent, so to speak, but we're interdependent, and that's why we need fellowship. The Bible says where there's two, one can keep the other one warm. I want to come into unity and agreement with you. And I want you to consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Churches and Ministries. Man, I'm telling you, we have such great meetings. We have breakfasts every quarter. And in those breakfasts, we share things that help take our ministries to the next level. There are also times when we bring in special speakers. But most of the time, we're just networking and coming together and sharing a group of pastors and ministers and leaders from the community that are coming together to create change in the earth realm. If you need a place to call home, a place that's going to love you, give you instructions and impartations that will cause your ministry to grow and change and be all that you believe God has told you it could be, well, become a part or consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministry. I'm so blessed to be the president and the founder of this organization. It was birthed because I started birthing sons and we needed to be we have a place that we can beat around and just fellowship and glean from one another. The Bible says, iron sharpens is iron. So does the kindness of one friend to another. I may paraphrase that, but you know what I'm talking about. We need each other. Every joint supply. You may have a supply that I need. I may have a supply that you need. So an announcer is going to come and leave some information that you may know how to become a part of or find out when our next meeting is. I look forward to meeting you and greeting you in the name of Jesus Christ. On behalf of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries. God bless you and keep you is my prayer. To learn more about the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Christian Churches and Ministries or to receive a membership packet, write to 351 Southcraft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama 36611. Or you can call area code 251-456-2652. Listen, if you're out there, now it's an opportunity that you may be able to participate in this service. You may be saying, Pastor Roberts, I, I watch you each and every week and I'm tired of my life going the way it is. Let me tell you something. You need to invite Jesus Christ into your life to be your personal Lord and Savior. In just one second, I want you to bow your head. Now, you don't have to bow your head. Just open your eyes look at this screen and pray this prayer with me. You know, the Bible says that all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe the Bible. So listen, let's say this prayer. Say, Father, I thank you that your word declares that if I would confess with my mouth 
and believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead and I would be saved. Now, Father, I renounce the hidden works of darkness. I, I, I renounce every allegiance to satanic influences. That's right, to satanic influences. I command the devil and his cohorts to loose their hold on my life. And I thank you now, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that I receive my salvation right now. I thank you, God, for coming into my life and saving me. Wow. I know someone's going to tell you that's not it. It takes more than that. But according to the Bible in Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. The first stage was repentance, recognizing that you needed a Savior. Welcome to the family of God. Listen, if you prayed that prayer with me, I want to send you something. I want to send you this little booklet called What is Salvation? It's a little book that I wrote some years ago. It only has about 16 pages, but I'll tell you 16 pages of power. And it gives an explanation on how and what salvation is. I want to put this in your hand for free if you just simply call or write us today at the number located on the screen. Well, I want to thank God for you tuning in each and every week and thank God for you accepting this invitation to allow my Savior, my Lord, to become your Savior and your Lord. Welcome to the family of God. And until next week, on this same station, at this same time, remember that without faith, it's impossible to please God and you be blessed. To receive your copy of the book, What is Salvation? Simply write to Word of Life Community Church, 351 Southcraft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama. And remember, without faith, it is impossible to please God. You be blessed. Be sure to check your local listings for the days and times that you can view the Power in the Word broadcast. Community Church is here to serve you with one church in four locations. In Pritchard, Alabama, located at 1682 South Edmore Avenue on Sundays at 8.30 a.m. In Chickasaw, Alabama, located at 351 Southcraft Highway on Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. and 11 o'clock a.m. In East Bruton, Alabama, located at 111 Florida Street on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock p.m. And in Pascagoula, Mississippi, located at 3705 Burden Avenue on Thursdays at 7 o'clock p.m. For more information, log on to our website at www.wordoflifeccc.org. This has been another edition of Power in the Word. On behalf of Dr. Henry and Sherry Roberts and the entire Word of Life Community Church family, we say God bless. Tune in next week for another edition of Power in the Word. And remember that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Until next time, God bless. You have to watch when you marry how you influence your husband. You got to watch what you say to him. Because for most men, they were predominantly raised by their mothers. And so one of the only encouraging voices he ever had was the voice of a woman. It wasn't his daddy's voice that when he was in the womb, he was hearing echoing. The first voice recognition he has is a feminine gender. So because of that, the influence of that voice in his life, you can make or break a man.
Welcome to Power in the Word, the exciting teaching ministry of yours truly, Dr. Henry W. Roberts, Jr. I am the founder and pastor of the Word of Life Community Church, one church, multiple locations to serve you, your entire family. Look, I want you to call a neighbor, call a friend, let them know that Power in the Word is on the air, then get your Bible, pen, and a notebook. Listen, I've been seeing some of you, hearing some of you, you've been talking to me, telling me how this program has been being a blessing to you. Well, look, this is what I need you to do. Write me sometimes. Tuck a little something in the envelope. Doesn't have to be much. Every little bit counts. We're on the air. I need you to partner with me to make this gospel go forth around the world. We're making an impact that can't be erased. We're giving the devil a headache all because you partner with us. Continue to pray for us. But now, let's get ready to go into a revelatory world where I'm teaching revelatory truths that can change your life. I can help you if you let me. Tune in. Wait till we get back. God bless you. Go to Genesis chapter 2. I mean, chapter 1, verse 28, verse 30. You got it? Then hold your finger on that page. Go to chapter 2. We're going to look at verses 15 and verse 17. All right, everybody got the first one? All right, everyone, I'm waiting on you. I don't know if you have it. I ain't hear nothing on this side. I'm standing over here with y'all. Y'all ain't said nothing. Everybody got it? Okay, we're going to the book of Genesis. That's the first book of the Bible. shouldn't be that hard to find. See, because the Old Testament, that's your foundation. You can't build a building without a foundation. So you got to know where you're going. You got to know what you got to have. And you got to understand that God wants me to have these foundations so I can understand. The Old Testament prophesies about what we're walking in in the new. See, by the time we get to the Abrahamic covenant, I was talking to Dr. Marvin Sapp this week. And he, he taught on in his little speech dissertation. He had to do at this, this uh, educational conference we were at. And, and he was dealing with the Abrahamic covenant. When he got finished, I say, Doc, do you realize, and I'm going to live way ahead of myself, I said, do you realize that the Abrahamic covenant was so huge, it was so large, till it could not be capacitated in one man's lifetime? In other words, Abraham lived a long time, but he never saw in the physical. Now, he's in the great crowd of witnesses looking at us now. But he never saw in the field what God promised him, watch this, was so large that his life couldn't capacitate it. 60, 70, 80, 90, 120, 960 years as Methuselah lived, couldn't capacitate the, mass, the, 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 the massiveness of what God promised he was going to do through Abraham. And so it, it was so huge to you and I are still benefiting from it. It's still coming to pass. And then even in our lifetime, we won't even be able to see it all. Our children will see it. See, you know how you've heard great uh, prolific speakers, and they're speaking, they'll say, well, we're standing on the shoulders of our ancestors. That's the truth. Right now in the kingdom, we're standing on the shoulders of Abraham. Now, when you leave this earth realm, whatever you leave behind, your children will be standing on your shoulders. Do you see it? So that means it wasn't able to be capacitated, fully lived out in one man's lifetime. It has to keep going and going and going and going. Kind of like the scripture says, uh, a wise man layeth up an inheritance for his. So now you're dealing with two generations just in that one. Now, after that two generations gets born and they're operating that same wisdom that was preceded them, guess what? It goes to the children's children. To the children's children, to the children's children, to the children's 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 children. See, so by the time we get to talking on that Abrahamic covenant, and I show you where it says, "In thee shall all families of the earth be blessed," you'll be able to pull that together spiritually and see it with your natural eye. All right, where did I say go? Genesis chapter one. Just want to look at that real, real quick. Ready? Read it. Mm -hmm. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. Seed, uh huh. So we told you that that first covenant had to deal with the tree. Told you that it was the type and the shadow or the typification of what was to later be called the tithe. So the first covenant God cut with man dealt with obedience to his word concerning the tree that was in the midst of the garden. 
He said, out of all the trees that are in the midst of the garden, you may have freely eat, but the tree that's in the midst of the garden, thou shalt not eat of it. He never said, don't touch it. Eve kind of added that. He said, but in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. So what was supposed to happen? When that tree bare fruit, it just falls to the ground and you just let it grow. But you still had the responsibility of taking care of the tree. Yeah, you know how God bless you? Then it's up to you to get it to the kingdom where it's supposed to be. Now either you're going to obey it or you're going to disobey it. Let's move real quickly. Let's go to the Adamic covenant. Genesis chapter 3. I need you to get me 14 through 19. Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 through 19. You got it? Waiting on some of y'all over here. Y'all got your Bibles today? On you, pray? you ready? All right, ready to read. All right, so the first part he deals with the when this covenant, he deals with the devil. He tells the devil, now this is what I'm doing, gonna do for you for what you did. Keep reading. My Lord. All right, now that 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 points, Lamanis. To, 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 to what we read earlier, Galatians chapter 3. The purpose of Christ going to the cross. Right here, he promises redemption. He promises.